is question three of the 2016 scholarship physics exam. So it is. A satellite in circular orbit above the Earth has a rotational period of two hours. The satellite is orbiting above the above the Earth and is moving in the same rotational direction. I'll just quickly chuck a line into that. Is the Earth all satellites at any height are said to be weightless? Explain. Um, so this is the key term that we're sort of looking for, and it's a bit of a, it's a colloquial term. So what it really means is there's no reaction force. So when they're orbiting the Earth, um, the satellite or the I don't know what is it the astronauts. Astronauts? No, okay, no, the satellites are in constant free fall. I was looking for astronauts because it's usually correct. Like, this example is always given with astronauts. But anyway, um, they're always in free fall. It's just every time, if we have like a picture, here's the Earth. Every time they fall a little bit, a little bit towards the Earth, so they accelerate a little bit down towards the Earth, they're over here. And that velocity is pointing that way that they gained. And as they fall, you know, now they'd fall a little bit towards the Earth here, but now they're over here. So they constantly fall towards the Earth, they just miss it. Um, so they're in constant free fall, um, because there's no support force, um, or no reaction force, they seem to be weightless. So I'll just pause it and write it out um, semi-coherently. Right, so I've said the feeling of weightlessness, weightlessness is due to no reaction force acting on the satellite. That's pretty much the answer. I added this other stuff as well. The satellite is in constant free fall falling towards the Earth, but due to its tangential velocity, so it's like sideways velocity, I'm pretty sure that's the word for it, um, uh, misses the Earth, subsequently falling around the Earth. That's pretty much it. Um, I don't know if this is the best answer, but that's the gist of it anyway. Um, right, what do we got next? Calculate the height above the Earth's surface of the satellite. Um, so we have, we'll assume it's going in a circle. So anything that moves in a circle needs a circular force to move in a circle. So we're going to use mv squared over r. And then we ask ourselves, what is the force that holds the satellite in place? And that's gravity. So the formula for the gravitational force is big G, big M, little m over r squared. Now we have gravitational constant, we have the mass of the Earth. We can see that the little mass is cancelled. This is essentially a derivation of Kepler's law, um, or a, a, vari a, a variation of the derivation of Kepler's law. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, right, and we're going to cancel out one of these R's. Um, so we get essentially left with uh, V squared equals big G, big M over R. And we remember that the velocity is equal to 2 pi R, which is just the angular velocity over the period. Um, what else do we need? Uh, I did, like, when you do this with Kepler's derivation, you do this technique as well, um, because essentially we're trying to rearrange for the radius and have the period in there, because we've got the period, it's two hours up there. So we're going to substitute that into here, and we are going to move that uh, up. So we're going to have 2 squared is 4, pi squared uh would have been, oh, yeah, it would have been squared. Uh, stuff, I'll put squared over t squared equals big G, big M over R. I'm going to move that R up, and then I'm going to move that t squared uh, across to that side, and then I'll move the 4 pi squared under. So I'm going to have R, I'll just check out the line there, R cubed is equal to big G, big M, uh, t squared over 4. 4 pi squared um, and essentially I'm trying to find the radius from the center of the earth to the satellite and then I'll just subtract the radius of the earth that that's my go-to like I sort of already I've already done this question maybe I should have sort of announced that before I started um, but if I find the radius it's I can find I can get close to the answer um, and then I'll just need to subtract the radius of the earth so essentially the radius of the earth, this little r, is going to be equal to the cube root of big G, big M, t squared, t, t cubed, over 4 pi squared. Um, and if you, oh, do I put the numbers in? Yeah, I'll put the numbers in. Um, that is equal to cube root of G is 6.67, 6, 7, uh, 7 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of the earth is... 5.98, I'm just getting all the data from up here, um, 5.98 times 10 to the 24, 
the period. What is the period? Oh, it's two hours. So uh, two times 60 times 60, because the units have to be in seconds, um, divided by four pi squared. Pretty sure that is us. And that equals, what does that equal? Eight. 0 0.06 times 10 to the 6 meters um, and the radius is equal to the radius of the earth plus the height in other words the height is equal to the radius minus the radius of the earth and that is 8.06 times 10 to the 6 minus what's the radius of the earth 6.37 6.37 times 10 to the 6, and that gives me, what did that give me? 1.69, 1.69 times 10 to the 6 metres, which is, how many kilometres is that? 1,700 kilometres, 1,700 kilometres? That's a lot. Yeah, no, that's probably about right. Is that outside the magnetosphere? No, it's nowhere near as close to the moon. The moon's is a hundred thousand kilometers. Pretty sure. Anyway, um, seems legit. Right, next question. What is our next question? Calculate. Oh, here we go. Calculate the angular velocity of the satellite relative to the Earth. So I've already done this question um, on the like before. I always practice these questions before I do them, just so I have the good answer, like the good explanations to how to solve them. So that is why. I underlined same direction as the Earth. So I'll draw like a quick kind of sketch up. Um, here, what will I do? I'll draw, try and draw myself the Earth, and then I'm going to draw my little satellite up here with the little solar panels on it, and then I am going to have the Earth is moving this way with some angular velocity omega, and the satellite is moving this way with some angular velocity omega prime. And if you and if we want to find this velocity with respect to a stationary Earth, we need to go this minus this equals the relative velocity. So we have uh, the angular velocity of the satellite minus the angular velocity of the Earth. Um, I'm going to check with subscript E for Earth and then subscript S for satellite. I just did that prime because this is not... Ooh... Yeah, maybe I'll get rid of that prime. It's a little bit unnecessary. Um, and that is going to be equal to the angular velocity relative relative um, to of the satellite to the Earth. Um, and just remember that angular velocity is equal to, it would be equal to 2 pi f, but it's equal to 2 pi um, divided by the period because we're dealing with periods. Um, in other words, we have, I'm going to pull the, 2 pi out of both of these. So I'm going to have 2 pi, just because it's easier for calculations, 1 over the period of the satellite minus 1 over the period of the Earth. Um, and that is going to be equal to 2 pi, uh, what have we got? 1 over 2 hours, it was over the page, 2 times 60 times 60, uh, uh, minus the period of the Earth, it spins around in a day. So we've got 24 times 60 times 60. There we go. And that is going to be equal to 7.99 times 10 to the negative 4 radians. Rad second 1, radians per second. Because um, it's an angular velocity. And essentially we have omega rela, rela, I'll just call it that, equals 8 uh, times 10 to the negative 4. Radians per second, negative one. Um, oh, that was three ACF, wasn't it? Maybe I could just do 8.0000. There you go, I'll round it up. Um, I probably could have done, ah, uh, no, but it rounds all the way. Calculate the angle when measured, uh, measured with respect to the center of the Earth through which the satellite will be visible to the observer at the equator. Right, so I'm gonna draw some pictures. I'll draw the Earth, and I'll spin this round, I'll draw a little man, if I can, here's my little man. And I'm going to draw the orbit of the satellite, like so. There's the satellite, and I'm going to get my ruler, 
And my little man, if he was on the surface, if he looked to the left, which would be that way, I don't know if this is left or right, but whatever, this would be the area that he'd be able to see. So this, this area up here would be the whole area he'd be able to see, and it's asking uh, the angle with, measured with respect to the center of the Earth. So here's the center of the Earth. Um, essentially, from this point down, and it's by symmetry from this point down as well. So we're trying to find, and then we're trying to find this whole angle here, this from here to here. Um, but I'll split this triangle in half. Um, so it's this and this combined. So I'm going to call this theta 1. Oh, I'll just call it theta, and then we'll just double theta equals full angle. Um, right, so what do we got? We've got a triangle. We have, this is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the radius, big R, because we used it over the page, plus the height. And from here to here, here's my right angle here. Um, and this is just the radius. So we have the adjacent. We have the hypotenuse. It's co, so it's going to be cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. In other words, that is equal to, what's the adjacent? R, the radius, over the radius plus the hypotenuse. Um, in other words, theta is equal to cos inverse, that should be inverse negative 1, um, R plus R plus H. Um, the radius, and that equals cos inverse, we'll go over the page, R uh, is 6.37, 6.37 times 10 to the 6, and R plus H, well, we've got that here, R plus H is little r, which we found to be 8.6 times 10 to the 6, so we can just chuck that in, 8 point, was it 06? 06. 06 times 10 to the 6, and if you chuck that in your calculator, you are going to get, what did that get me, 37.8 degrees, um, so full sweep, sweep is 2 theta, because it's from here all the way around, so that is going to be equal to 75 0.6 degrees. Um, similar question to this, I think a few years ago it was a modern physics question, scholarship question, a modern physics scholarship question where it was like uh, a laser was shining on the moon and you had to count up how many photons were hitting inside like a, a circular patch on the moon and you had to use a similar trick um, to doing that. It's been a while since I did that exam, it might have been like two, two or three years ago. Um, I think it might be the 2017 scholarship exam. No, maybe, yeah. Maybe the 2018. It's one of them. Um, anyway, right. Last question, because we're hitting 13 minutes. There are limits to the largest and smallest possible periods, oh, largest and small periods of an Earth satellite discuss the statement. I mean, the smallest um, periods of the Earth satellite, uh, I think it's like 80 kilometers is where space officially starts. I mean, there's a 60 symbol uh, 60 symbols video um, from the University of Nottingham, which goes over like the legal boundary of space. Um, if you get too low, you start running into atmosphere and you start burning up. So, pretty sure the Starlink satellites, those internet satellites by that company run by Elon Mu Elon Musk, um, they are not quite in the atmosphere, but almost. Um, they can use atmospheric drag, so. They're about as low as you can possibly get. The upper limit is if you start getting too far away, um, the, f the formula for gravity is, it's a sort of, the force is proportional. Well, it's equal to big G, big M, little m over R squared. In other words, F is proportional to 1 over R squared. So the further you go away, uh, it's like exponentially, or not, is it not exponentially? It's um, to the power of 2, the force decreases. So if you go like, double as far away, you're going to have quarter of the force. Um, so if you go start going too far away from the planet, the attractive force becomes less and less and less, and then you start running into problems of other planets pulling on you, um, such as Mars, that's probably the closest. I think Venus is too far away. Um, yeah, right, I'll, I'll pause it, and then I'll just write it up. 
Right. So I've said one thing I completely missed is there are limits to the largest and smallest periods of an Earth satellite. This doesn't talk about the radius whatsoever. I just assumed because I already know like the type of the answer um, over the page. When I was talking about this question here, I was talking about Kepler's law of derivation. Um, Kepler's law of derivation is essentially if you move the four pi squared up onto this side, um, four is four pi g and the mass of the Earth are all essentially can be assumed. Well, the only thing that's not a constant is the mass of the Earth, um, but you can make it constant. So essentially, you have r cubed is proportional to t squared. So we have over here t squared is proportional to r cubed. That's Kepler's law, um, and then from there we can go from the, the period to the radius, um, which then we can say the lower limit is the atmosphere, uh, is the atmosphere boundary below this, the satellite would burn up, which is totally, totally true, because you'd have to have such high velocities to maintain your orbital period. Um, otherwise, you start falling towards the Earth. If you were stationary just above the Earth, you literally just fall down. So if you shot a rocket from the Earth straight up at, I don't know, like rocket speeds, um, it would get to a point above the Earth, if it had no tangential velocity, it wouldn't actually get into orbit whatsoever. It would just fall straight back down. So if you see rocket launches, and you see like the long exposure from a camera, normally they look sort of like this. They sort of take off straight up, but they start turning pretty quickly, and eventually they're going sideways. Um, the upper limit is a radius such that the field strength from the Earth is weaker than other fields, than other gravitational fields such as from the moon or other planets. Um, that's really about it.